Yeah, we are excited that in 1965, uh, on July 30th, today, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law the bill that would lead to Medicare. Medicare has more than doubled the number of persons aged 65 and over with health insurance, has increased access to mainstream health care services, and substantially reduced the financial burdens faced by older Americans and people with disabilities. No other program has changed the lives of Americans more than Medicare, and we're here to celebrate that. gives the advantage to the insurance companies and hedge funds, allowing them to offer Medicare coverage paid for by the federal government for each person that they insure. The Medicare Advantage program was created with the promise that the private sector could reduce costs by better managing care. But as multiple investigative journalists have reported and shown, the exact opposite has happened. The quest for ever-increasing profits by the health insurance, corporations, and hedge funds offering these plans has been insatiable, and patients now receive only 75 cents on the dollar paid through Medicare. The other 25 cents per dollar goes to corporations who, by the way, largely avoid paying taxes. Through straight up fraud and making people look sicker than they actually are, corporations offering Medicare Advantage are being overpaid by 30 to 75 billion every year. <laughs> On top of that, there is extensive evidence that seniors and people with disabilities who are on these plans face unnecessary claims and denials of care and finding that they have to pay out of network costs 
because they can't find the appropriate providers who are in the network. And by the way, these hedge funds and insurance companies own the network. These problems will only be exacerbated as the Medicare Advantage inroads and people's health care needs increase. Thanks to increasing media attention on this issue and the work of progressive organizations, the politics around Medicare Advantage are shifting. While Medicare Advantage has enjoyed bipartisan support with very little scrutiny in the past, that support is dwindling. Up until recently, the industry has enjoyed unchecked and unquestioned support for their Medicare Advantage plans, and they finally are facing some heat. We need, we need to sound the alarm and do the critical work to generate media attention about this. We have an opportunity to popularize the narrative about traditional Medicare as a public good and the need for us to protect it. To build the world we want, a world where seniors and disabled people, everybody, are not the subject of profiteering schemes but are guaranteed the care and dignity they deserve we need to actually develop policy to improve traditional Medicare so that everyone can truly be free to choose coverage that will be there for them. In order to rein in these bad plans and improve traditional Medicare, we need to mobilize elected officials who have the power and the will to do something about this. President Biden has started to take some action but he and the administration should and can do so much more. Yeah. 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 We, we've got a digital petition calling on President Biden to use his executive authority to take action to protect Medicare from corporate greed. Please sign it. And you can also, we have the handout today with a QR code, and also you can go on to the, our partner's webpage. It's called Be A Hero which is all about promoting this, um, protesting the corporate takeover of Medicare. So please take a look at the Be A Hero page and sign up. And also, this is not under legislative control, but legislators can, can, can push Biden to take action. So that's our strategy. the uprise so we're just going to keep wiping the mics in between just saying and people this is why we need health care right? yeah. yeah. president biden it's time to reclaim medicare yeah. reclaim medicare i want to introduce a fabulous woman who has had the experience of how medicare can be such a positive influence on her life I would like to have everyone give a big round of applause for Ramona, 96 years old. You can correct me. I'm 97. Everybody. I thought you wanted to be younger. I was going, I'm just supposed to give a nice neutral speech about how Medicare has been so good to me, but that speech has me all fired up. It's hard to be neutral. <clears throat> but anyway, if I hadn't had Medicare, I've had it for 30 years now. Wow. And if I hadn't had it, not louder? Yep. Yeah, okay, is that Close. better? Yeah. Yeah. If I hadn't had it, I would have long since been in a whole nursing home or a destitute. It's just been such a blessing. And I, would, <laughs> I remember when it first started uh, back, you know, in, under uh, Lyndon Johnson. There are so many people who are just pathetically left without any help. And the, I think the lifespan is much shorter than it is now because people now have access to wonderful health care. And uh, all I can say is that I hope you people are successful in what you're trying to do. It's just, it would be terrible if, if uh, Medicare went under. Thank you, that's all. I
thank you for being here. I am a victim, and that's why I am speaking now. My name is Gladys Gottlieb. I'm a retired teacher. My husband is a retired BOCES administrator. His health insurance was a family plan of traditional Medicare and Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. My plan was individual Medicare and Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. Out-of-pocket expenses for health insurance for us was now prescription prescription drugs if we did the mail order were no cost because I was reimbursed for my Part B deduction with no copay. Yeah. The combination of plans provided us with virtually no out-of-pocket expenses. Yeah. We had no copays for doctor's visits, prescription drugs, and we were both reimbursed for Medicare Part B deductions. I am furious because my school district switched my coverage from Medicare Blue Cross to Medicare Advantage. <laughs> I had no choice in this decision. The reason I have no choice is that this was negotiated by my district and my union. My husband's former employee very quickly informed me that they could no longer carry me on, right, on, this, on his Blue Cross policy because I have Medicare Advantage. I no longer get Part B reimbursement. Disadvantage! Yes, and uh, I now have to pay $15 for every doctor's appointment, and I have co-pays on my drugs, which are plentiful. Out-of-pocket expenses are now annually in excess of $2,500 a year. That's a crime! Medicare Advantage is no advantage for me. No. Thank, you, Thank you, Gladys! Thank you, Gladys, for that experience. It really is heartbreaking. And now I'd like to bring up Maggie to talk about her experiences. Thank you, and certainly thank you for being here and listening to this story. Um, my story is about my son's girlfriend. She couldn't be here. She couldn't be here because she continues to go under treatment for leukemia. In 2019, she was diagnosed with leukemia, her last semester of gradu to graduate before she graduated. At that point in time, she was feeling really tired. You know, the end of the semester, you're tired, you're rushing to get you're tired, you're rushing to get things done. She got, and she was getting tired and tired and tired. We said, you gotta go to the hospital. You gotta go to the And finally one night, she, she took herself to the hospital. When she got there, she learned within an hour that she had leukemia. At that time, they scrambled and rushed her to Albany because it was the nearest hospital where she could get treatment. She was there for four or five weeks. I, we were there regularly with her for the four or five weeks. And at the end of that time, she was told that it's gonna to be another year and a half or four or more of follow-up treatment, but that it could come back. Cause you know, leukemia, cancer comes back. Well, they did come back, unfortunately. And at that point in time, or during that time, they were, she was told that don't, you know, if it does come, if it does come back, she would be able to, they have doctors that they work very closely with, with either Dana Farber in Boston, or Sloan Kettering. So of course, we were pretty happy because you know both of those hospitals are very, very good for treatment. As a result, as a result of having to go back to the doctor and having to go to the hospital, 
they ended up calling to see to get the prior approval you know prior approvals are a problem yes at that point it was 15 months after they had told her about sloan kettering and dana farber they called she could not get approval to go to sloan she could not get approval to go to Sloan, and she could not get approval to go to Dana-Farber. Why? Because it was now out of network. So, being out of network meant, being out of network meant that she could not go to the doctors who had a team already working with her own doctors at Albany. She could not go to the hospital she could not go to the hospital and get the services that the family was expecting because it was a different hospital. Where she ended up going was a very different place where the housing that Sloan Kettering normally referred people to was not going to be available. The parking, the simple transportation was not going to be possible. We planned for Sloan Kettering in the event this would happen. And lo and behold, we had a scramble for a different hospital. We had a scramble for a different family services, we had a scramble for different housing, we had a scramble for different parking. How do you get there? How are we going to do this? Well, luckily, we, they worked with her. She's now better. But I tell you one thing, she clearly and we clearly were upset with this. We clearly have been affected by the fact that now we have to go to two different hospitals because there's no need to go to Albany and Sloan Kettering. There's no need to go to there wouldn't have been any need to go to two different hospitals. Instead, we end up traveling back and forth to Albany and back and forth to New York City, but not Sloan Kettering. She has two different, pro two different medical uh, uh, ports to where she could share her information, and that information is different than the information at Albany that would have been in Sloan, that would have been one combined um, information source. The point, the really awful part about this, is that she has nightmares. She has nightmares not only about her cancer treatment, not only about what's going to happen to her, but also about the awful part that she has to, had, had to go through. You can only imagine, when you're afraid of dying, because she was afraid of dying, that all of a sudden she now has to get a different team of doctors to work with her team of doctors. It was disgusting, it continues to be a problem, and Medicare is not Medicare advantage, it's really Medicare disadvantage. Be clear about that. Disadvantage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maggie. And I want to just say, Medicare has made such a difference in people's lives, and while we always think of Medicare as a senior program, we know that young people are uh, taking the, uh, as its health care. So I just want to now introduce another speaker, Eli, who I absolutely adore for his energy, his intelligence, and his uh, uh, everything else. Handsomeness. You forgot handsomeness. handsomeness. Okay. You know, Sometimes the truth is ugly. It wouldn't be fair to stand here and put lipstick on a pig. America is aging. And as our people grow older, Medicare will be harder to maintain. In 1965, when Medicare was passed, only around 10% of Americans were old enough to qualify. That's 65 and up. Today, that number is 17%. And by the time I turn 65, a quarter of Americans will qualify for Medicare, and the number of 85 and up Americans will have tripled. Wow. Medicare will be pushed to the brink by this change, and I can't tell you with a straight face that Medicare will be around when I turn 65. But I'll tell you one thing. If the big corporations have their way, I won't get a cent. Today, Big insurance companies across the country are sending us down a road towards Medicare's grave, pushing the idea that their shareholders, not our democratic institutions, ought to run the show. No! They say that only they can cut costs and save Medicare, and they'll rob us blind if we let them. Over half of Medicare plans have already been taken over in this corporate scheme called Medicare Advantage. And what have the results been? 
the insurance companies win and everybody else loses. Of the top 10 companies providing corporate Medicare Advantage plans, nine out of 10 of them have been accused of committing widespread fraud or overcharging their patients. On average, these companies profit twice as much from Medicare plans as their other insurance offerings. They temporarily reduce premiums, persuading elderly patients in need of care to switch to their plans. But year after year, their greed, their fraud, and their single-minded pursuit of profits have ballooned the total cost of Medicare, threatening the program's collapse. Costs have gone up, not down, and it's time to reckon with this fact. Rather than saving Medicare, they are accelerating the crisis. And when the system collapses, they'll leave our seniors with no choice but to buy worse plans from them. No. No. If these companies have their way, I'll never see a cent from Medicare. See, for them, the end of Medicare is just an excuse to make more money. We're standing at a crossroads, and time is running out to choose a better path. The insurance giants tell us that if we follow them, they can cut the costs of Medicare and save the system from collapse. But the numbers tell a different story. So are we going to put up with this corporate fraud? No! Are we going to let them rob us of the promise of aging with dignity? No! Or are we going to fight back? Fight back! Damn right we are. Yes, America is getting older, but that's not a reason to let Medicare die. That's why we ought to protect Medicare right. and ensure that all our seniors have access to the care they need. That's right. Now is the time to speak out. If I am gonna see Medicare by the time I turn 65, we are gonna need to come together and put people before profits. We need to say loud and clear that corporations are not saving Medicare. They're accelerating its demise. We cannot let them keep pouring gas on the fire. We must end the corporate takeover of Medicare before it's too late. Many of you are here today because you don't want to lose your health care and I applaud you. But I also want to thank you for standing for more than just yourselves because it's the work of fighters like you that gives me hope that when I turn 65, I'll have Medicare too. You, Today, Brian. we demand a new path forward. Woo! It's time to take back our Medicare and preserve the program for a new generation. Yeah. So make some noise. Woo! Call your friends. Call your representatives. Shit, call the president. Because we are not going to put up with this garbage anymore. No. We are going to keep making noise because now is the time to hold these corporations accountable and take back our health care. We will not stop fighting until the fraud of the insurance companies is exposed. No. The overcharging is put to a stop. Yeah. Our seniors have better choices. Yeah and a bill stopping the corporate takeover of Medicare is sitting on the president's desk with a signature. Right. We demand the right to age with dignity and we're not going away. Thank you. See, I told you how adorable he is, right? So one of the things that I would really like to talk about, and we've been handing these out, if you don't have them, please see Lynn with the straw hat and the Hawaiian shirt. We want to hashtag reclaim Medicare from uh, corporate greed. So I just wanted to say there's tons of actions, including joining on uh, social media, uh, and if you could use the hashtag Reclaim Medicare, talking about Medicare fraud, sharing a picture of this event if you have it on your phone, call President Biden to protect our public Medicare, 
from the Medicare Advantage billionaire CEOs whose only focus is on profits over patient health. And there is a QR code on the sheet, so if you don't want to take a sheet, we're trying to be environmentally conscious. <laughs> Call your representative, including Senators Schumer and Gillibrand. And of course, we have our own representative, Ryan, from New York 18 and hold representative Mark Molinaro of New York 19 accountable. And with that, I would like to introduce Carla who will read a statement from Pat Ryan who could not be here with us today due to family obligations. Thank you. It's Pat Ryan's son's fourth birthday today. So he opted to stay with the family, which we, course are delighted to hear. So this is what Pat Ryan has given us. Hello everyone. I am so sorry I can't make it in person today, but thank you so much for everything you do to preserve this democracy. I'm proud to support Indivisible Ulster in this celebration of the Medicare program, a fundamental part of American life that I will always fight to strengthen and protect. Last year was a big year for Medicare. President Biden signed a law allowing the government to negotiate the price of prescription drugs, saving our seniors money on some of the most costly medications. Delivering relief for seniors is one of the reasons I ran for Congress in the first place, and we're just getting started. I'm working to lower the Medicare eligibility age, add critical benefits like vision and dental, and increase Social Security cost of living adjustments. At a time when extreme Republicans are fixated on ripping away these earned benefits from older Americans, I'm doubling down in the fight to protect Social Security and Medicare and assure hardworking Americans that their benefits will be there when they need them. Happy birthday, Medicare, and hope to see you all in person soon. And happy birthday to your son, Congressman Ryan. Thank you. we wound up having a couple of speakers who due to uh, unforeseen circumstances could not be with us here today so we have time to take a couple of experiences if you can keep them to under two and a half minutes I will be timing you our first our first speaker will be Laura okay so Five years ago when I turned 65, I was looking at Medicare programs and I know that Social Security reduces a certain amount out of your check every month, but then there are Part G and Part H and they're unaffordable. So somebody told me well, why don't you do like I do? Do a Medicare Advantage. And because it has the name Medicare in it, it's confusing and so you think you're getting coverage by Medicare when really it's just private insurance companies that are helping you. Maybe. I am stuck in this right now. I am a victim too. Whoa! Let us change this. President Biden sign the new act. Make things more fair and equitable. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I'd also like to bring up Lottie, who has a personal experience as well. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lolly Edinger. I'm in the town of Olive, and I'm a home care worker. I work with a man in his 30s who is quadriplegic, and I work with my uh, best friend's mom who has Parkinson's and dementia. Um, one experience I just wanted to share was in a moment of not paying attention, um, my one person, the, the uh, Zach um, is his name, um, got a call from Medicare and said, hey, take on our Medicare uh, disadvantage. Um, he wasn't thinking at the moment. He said, sure, sign me up. He was told that he wouldn't lose anything. About a week later, he went to his wound care appointment and lo and behold, they don't take it. He has wounds that need to be taken care of. 
Um, as he started looking through everything, he realized just how much he was going to lose. Um, fortunately, he was able to move back, but this is just one of the small things that we are seeing with this. And as Eli was pointing out, I don't know if Medicare will be around when I'm ready and I'm the one taking care of older people. I want to make sure that when I get to that age, I have someone looking out for me. So we need to take this back and it's so wonderful to see everyone here. Um, just a shout out to Caring Majority. We're working on things like this. Um, so, you know, find me, but we need to stop the corporate greed and stop taking our money. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really want to continue to give a shout out to the organizations that have been working with us. Primarily, uh, Be a Hero. Oh God, I'm so disorganized. No, uh, it's clean, it's clean. The, uh, Be a hero. I also want to thank Tin Horn Uprising <laughs> for bringing the music and also Indivisible Ulster, Olive Action, and other organizations that are helping to spread this by word of mouth. Um, if there's anybody else who might have a personal experience about Medicare disadvantage, now's the time. Otherwise, we're going to have a group a song, stand up, get up, get up stand up. So we're going to focus on Tin Horn Uprising after we do Medicare is under attack. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. Social Security is under attack. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. Medicaid is under attack. What do we do? Stand up, fight back.
we don't have pictures, it hasn't happened. <laughs> so if everyone could get on the green so Maxine can take a picture to show Lynn Sakai in Hawaii that we actually did gather at 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning. And so we're gonna say, stop the fraud in Medicare Advantage. Stop the fraud.